Okay, welcome back to economics, and today we're going to discuss elasticity of demand. Elasticity measures how much, elasticity of demand measures how much does the quantity of demand respond to I'm going to be careful here because we're going to have several elasticities. We could have, uh, we'll call it the, the own price, that is the price of that particular good. We can have cross price, which would be the price of another good. And we could have income, so a change in income. So let me do first this cross price. So what that says is, w the if we have the quantity of peanut butter and the price of jelly, then we have, if we look at the percent change in the quantity of peanut butter demanded over the percent change in the price of jelly, that's the cross price elasticity. Because it's a, with respect to the price of a different good. And the, the crucial question about the cross price elasticity Is it greater than zero or less than zero? And last time we said that if it is <coughs> greater than zero, then we have a complement, or sorry, a substitute. That is, if, if we, <coughs> we raise the price of something, then we want more of something else. That's a substitute. If it's less than zero, it's a complement. And we hypothesized, I'm not sure it's true, but we hypothesized that in the case of peanut butter and jelly, they were complements, and so that the cross price elasticity was therefore less than zero. That is, as the price of jelly went up, you consumed less peanut butter. So you could get a, if you had a number like negative 0.1 for this, that would say that for every 10% uh, <coughs> increase in the price of jelly, you demand 1% less peanut butter. Okay, so that's cross price elasticity. Own price elasticity is the percent change in the quantity divided by the percent change in the price of that own good. So in the case of peanut butter, it would be the, the percent change in the quantity demanded of peanut butter over the percent change in the price of peanut butter. And if we were to draw some demand curves, or a couple of them, this is highly elastic, highly price elastic with regard to the own price, and this is highly inelastic. And you might note that the graph for this one looks a little bit like an eye, so that's inelastic. And you, with a little bit of imagination, you can say the graph of this one looks more like an E for elastic. So that might be one way to remember that. And what that highly, <coughs> and the elasticity, is, again, is the percent delta QD over the percent delta P. That's the price elasticity of demand. So when it's high, that means we get a very big shift in quantity 
for a small change in price. So a very small change in price can lead to a big response in terms of quantity. So uh, <coughs> if the price at uh, Burger King goes uh, <coughs> goes up, uh, we might consume a lot less burgers at Burger King and switch over to McDonald's or something like that. Um, okay, if it's highly inelastic, that means you get if you get a you you can get of a large price change and a relatively small quantity change. So quantity doesn't respond. So in this case, this number is very high. In this case, the elasticity is very low. You don't get much of a price response. For example, if you think <coughs> the price of cigarettes goes up by 10% because people are addicted to cigarettes, the, the reduction in quantity will be small. So if we went from the price of here all the way up to here, we might only get a very small reduction in quantity. So that's inelastic demand. Um, the key boundaries here are if the, il and I'll, I'll use this thing, this weird epsilon to be elasticity of demand, that's shorthand for this expression. If it's um, less than one, we say it is in inelastic, so we draw it like this one up here. And if it's greater than one, we say it's elastic, which would be like the one on the left. So greater than one, elastic. And equal to one, it's unit elastic. Now, why are those th the interesting boundaries? They're the interesting boundaries because revenue is equal to <coughs> P times Q. That is, the sales revenue in, the, in a market is the price times the quantity. And um, when, when the... Um, elasticity is less than one, you can raise revenue by raising price. When the elasticity is greater than one, the way to raise revenue, it may not necessarily raise profits, but to raise revenue by lowering the price. Okay, so if you lower the price a little bit, you get a big increase in quantity and overall your revenue goes up. If you uh, use calculus or maybe even just algebra, you can probably prove these, uh, these points. Um, and if it's equal to one, then changing price leaves revenue unchanged. So that's why those are the boundaries that we use for calling uh, less than one inelastic equal to one unit elastic greater than one elastic. So remember that. Okay. Um, <coughs> to calculate elasticity of demand, we could, if we had some sample numbers, let's say that the quantity demand at, at a price of 2 is 100, and the quantity demand at the price of 3 is 80, then the percent change in quantity over the percent change in price can be done a number of ways. We can do um, <coughs> 100 minus 80 
over 80 all over so that's this quantity <coughs> and then over this price over 2 minus 3 over 3 and that'll give us an elasticity measure uh, what will that give us? By the way I should have put absolute value signs around these elasticities here because the elasticities are always going to be actually negative algebraically so let's make that absolute value and now I think we'll get a negative elasticity number here we're going to get uh, 20 over 80 over negative 1 over 3 and whatever that turns out to be what negative uh, 60 over 80 and so the absolute value is less than 1 and so I think I put together an inelastic example although I'm not exactly sure what uh, a lot of textbooks advocate is instead of calculating the elasticity at a point like this they in, for the denominator they advocate using the midpoint so instead of using 80 we'll do halfway between 180 so let's try that 100 minus 80 over the average of 180 which is 90 and then we do the same thing with the percent change in price we do 2 minus 3 over the average of 2 minus 3 or 2.5 so that becomes 20 over 90 over minus 1 over 2.5 is equal to what 50 over 90 I think I'm getting I think that's what I get out of that and that'll <coughs> again you're still having an elasticity that is less than one so we've got an inelastic demand and I think I'll save income elasticity for next time and just leave it at that